Hello everyone and welcome to Motorcast. I'm your host Joshua Satil and of course I'm joined by the one, the only, Matthew Bolton. Hello guys, how is it all going? And well you know what it is, it's the review of the WRC in Sweden. Yes, what what a great rally of course, like Matthew said, we're here to review the WRC. What a fantastic season so far it's been, I mean, we're only two rallies in but I'm already loving it. And uh, I think it certainly showed F1 really how to, how to make some decent uh, set of uh, new regulations. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Sweden then. And we've got to start with it, Matty. Uh, Thierry Neuville for the second rally in a row with a, a very reasonable lead. Um, unfortunately, hits trouble on the last stage of Saturday. I mean, ugh, what's going on with uh, Thierry? My boy Thierry, man. <laughs> I mean, he just... I don't know what's what's going on. I mean, he just... He, he almost didn't need to push as hard as he did on that final stage. He had it in the bag coming into the... Or he would have had it in the bag coming into the final day. I just feel maybe he just... He gets almost too into the zone and then he... Because we... I mean, we've not necessarily seen Neville make these kind of race-leading mistakes before. So maybe it's a little bit of pressure and maybe perhaps a little bit of not knowing how to deal with being in a uh, rally-leading position as often as he's actually found himself in this season. Um... But it's really disappointing because you can feel, you know, watching it, he's clearly the class of the field this year. And it's so frustrating to see that he's crashing out in sort of, in in stages where you feel he, if he just, you know, knocked off one or two percent, he would have gotten away with it. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd honestly stopped following it from, from that Saturday. I, I I was kind of keeping an eye on the times for the, the last stage. I mean, there was, well, the, the, the second to last stage, when was, there was just a super special left. Um, so I thought I'd go away and, uh, you know, because I thought that one would just be obviously done in a minute and a half or whatever uh, and nothing would really affect the rally. But uh, it turned out to be a very, very important stage. And this then handed the lead to Yari Mati Latvala. And, and I say handed uh, not in a bad way because although, of course, Latvala has been very fortunate to kind of inherit the lead, he really did fight for it, didn't he, Matty? I mean, he won all of the stages on the last day. He had a slender margin, I think about three seconds over Oitana heading into the final day. And he just absolutely extended that margin so when he came into the final stage the power stage he pretty much had the win in the bag all he had to do was bring it home and that is exactly what he did for Toyota I mean wow what a performance from Yari Matty what a performance from Toyota I mean it really looks like Yari Matty is back to his best and it looks like Toyota have just I don't know they, they've they've clearly got something completely right really because second in Monty and of course now winning this rally Latvala leading the championship I mean yeah Toyota must be absolutely over the moon I mean they've surpassed all the expectations that we set them for the season never never mind the first two rallies oh yeah I I, I mean I said struggle to score a podium <laughs> let let alone let alone score a win that 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 is pretty incredible isn't it oh it's absolutely immense. Um, what I will say is Latfala, um on that final day was just, I mean, the amount of commitment he was putting into each and every stage was unbelievable. But you get the feeling that he's driving like a man who has nothing to lose and everything in the game because no one expected Toyota to be this far up this early in the championship. Yeah, definitely. They, they've certainly uh, mixed it right with, you know, Sitch and Hyundai and, and Ford. And it very much looks like any of those four manufacturers, uh, you know, could win each rally, which is, I think, really good to see. Yeah, like you said, he really did have, um, him and Tanak um, seem to have just an extra level of commitment, really, all weekend. They really do seem do seem to be pushing. And that Toyota really does show it off as well. I mean, you can really chuck it around the corners. And that's what Lavalo is doing. Um, I mean, if you watch the power stage, he wasn't at all holding back or just cruising to the victory. He was absolutely in the zone. And I think this kind of proves on his day he's unbeatable. But we we rarely kind of see that day with Lavalo. He's a very up and down driver, I guess a bit like Neville. But I guess with the pressure off, with, you know, expectations so low for Toyota... Um, and Hannanen kind of, you know, putting it in the tree every week. Um, I think, you know, Latvala really has carried this team through um, their return to the WRC, and I think already the guys at the top of Toyota will be thinking, yes, our investment has worked, and uh, I think they're only going to be gaining more and more support in terms of financial backers and in terms of a stable future in rally. I think uh, their return has certainly been a success from from these two rallies. Um, let's talk a bit about Tanak, of course. I did mention him. Um, and he managed to finish, of course, second in this rally, third in Monty. So it's been a pretty good start to the season for Oitanak. And he beat OJ, didn't he, Matty? And what would you could argue was pretty much a straight fight. Of course, OJ was running first on the road um, on, on day one. But after that, it was uh, 
seen like a uh, Tanak had it had the measure of him. We've never, I mean, in Monty, we saw glimpses of it, um, especially on the final day of him just going all out, and it seems to be working for him. I mean, in Sweden, um, he, 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 I mean, he put up an absolutely massive fight at Latvala, and I think, you know, they can come out of that uh, battle, both of them, seeing each other as equals, because that was absolutely amazing. And I was, I was, you know, thinking about the Oitanic of old, who perhaps would have lost, perhaps lost control or lost his uh, composure, but I think we're starting to see a side to Tanak now, where a little bit, and maybe maybe he's had a few words from Ogier, uh, you know, obviously a far more experienced teammate, which he hasn't really had in the past. You know, just just telling him to you know keep things under control and not to not to risk uh, throwing the car away. Uh, but I mean, the fight he put up against Latvala, um, it was just spectacular to watch, and I feel like. Tanak is a championship contender. I'm convinced after watching these first two rallies, I'm convinced he's able to put up not only not only a fight up to the rest of the uh, grid, you know, the Toyotas, the Hyundais, but also his teammate. I feel like, you know, we're, we're possibly in the hunt for a three or four, uh, three or four contenders for the championship right now. Yeah, I'd definitely say that. I mean, I'm guessing obviously you throw Neville in there as well, but I guess it, it it depends how he comes back from this, though, doesn't it? I mean, if he, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to do this every weekend, but it depends. You know, I think he's really got to get that that win in, in the next couple of rallies because if it doesn't, then it might just kind of carry on being a continuing thing where he just can't seem to get to the the finish of a rally uh, in the in the lead, but. Um, we'll move on to talk about fourth place, and we actually had the same four, five, six as we did in Monty, which is very, very weird. It wasn't looking like that from from the start, but how things uh, kind of shook out, we got the same top six in both Monaco and Sweden, but of course with the podium being slightly shuffled around. But four, five, six was exactly the same. Danny Sordo, Craig Breen, and Elvin Evans. Uh, what do you make of those those three guys' rallies? I mean, it was uh, quite contrasting for all of them, but uh, somehow they all ended up in uh, a pretty decent position. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Sordo, he was again quite under the radar. Um, not not too much happening with him, um, and again picking up solid points on a surface which he's not known to really uh, do well on. So I'm pretty impressed with Sordo, highest running of the Hyundai's again. So um, that car, if if Neville can obviously get, uh, well, obviously a pattern as well, having some, I think it was power steering problems. Uh, they're not, they just don't seem to be getting the look of the draw at the moment. And I guess Sordo is like, that, I think what Sordo represents is the absolute least that Hyundai could get from rallies. You know, fourth, with the fourth place being the absolute least, you know, the car is clearly, I think the car is probably the best one on the grid, but they just keep on getting flagged with issues. Um, coming on to, uh, Craig Breen, again, I mean, his rally didn't start off exactly to plan. He had a few issues on day one and day two, but um, again, just sort of keeping it consistent-ish and not, not doing what Meek did um, and kind of losing control of the car. Showing a lot of mental strength there as well to come back from, I think he was down in about ninth place at one point, to come back up and uh, score some solid points in what is a bit... I don't... I think the Citroen promised a lot in testing, but it's not really delivering a lot as of now. Um, and then finally, Elf and Evans, once again, just... Uh, day one was a bit off the pace, but then in the following two days, then managed to bring himself back up into some strong points finishes again. So uh, I think he's... Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with him because it takes a lot of ball to come back from uh, from about ninth place to finish up in sixth. Yeah, like you said, both Breen and Evans having issues. And of course, Sordo had a, a power steering issue as well in, in in Monty. So this does seem to be a bit of a recurring theme. And it is a, a major one, isn't it? Without power steering, these cars look an absolute handful to drive. Um, talking handful to drive, yeah, that's Citroen. Um, in terms of handling, it, it doesn't look good at all, really. I mean, obviously the pace isn't there, the handling isn't there. There's some pro- possibly kind of fundamental design flaws there. And, I mean, already looking ahead, I, I, if I had to make an early prediction, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in a new car next year or a kind of a, a tweak car later on this year because uh, they're having quite a few issues and uh, have, I think have fallen behind. Like you said, they were the favourites, I would say, um, coming into this season. But, you know, fourth in the championship, not delivering at all. It's uh, pretty 
dire start to the season for them. We might as well talk about Chris Meek while we're talking about Citroen. Um, and Stefan Lefebvre as well. Of course, Lefebvre did a bit of a breed in, in, in Monty where he was in the last year's Citroen, but he did a solid job, brought him some points. Um, same, though, cannot be said for Meek in terms of uh, finishing in the top 10. He did bring home two power stage points, but uh, oh, what, what can you say, Mike? Um, he's Well, what I can say is he's crashed out in you know top four position once again. Um, it's it. You could blame the car. I mean, the car, at least in Meek's hands, seems to have some pace to it because he was he's always running there or thereabouts in the beginnings of rallies. But whether it's just you know the final bit, you know, maybe it's just a tricky a tricky car to drive, and maybe it's just a tiring, a mentally tiring car to have to you know send through what or some of the fastest stages of the championship. Um. I mean, Meek is a professional racing driver, so he'll he'll have a bit more insight into the car than obviously what we do. But I just don't feel there's maybe this. I, I mean, I just got the impression when they were driving the car that it was a bit unstable. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the incident with Meek, I mean, it's not a it's not a huge off. It's just kind of a a little kind of the, the steering snaps and then they're down in the ditch. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it, for Citroen? Oh, uh, they've got they've got to pull themselves out of this rut now um, fortunately next rally in Mexico is a gravel rally um, not traditional sit and fighting ground they prefer the tarmac uh, rallies but either way I mean it it's away from snow they can possibly go into the mental mindset that now they're you know they're the underdogs and they've got everything to gain and nothing to lose but you know considering how far I mean Meek hasn't is nowhere in the championship at the moment. He's got so much ground to make up if he's want to even be considered a, a championship contender. And Citroen as well have got they've got to fix whatever it is with that car. I think it the steering or whatever uh, suspension set up that it just doesn't seem to be showing the pace which I think is available to uh, with the car. Yeah, I've got to agree with that. And uh, Hayden Padden as well, seven for a pretty quiet start to his season. Um, he had quite a few issues, obviously, as, as we've mentioned. Um, and that that's actually it for the uh, the WRC guys. We did have quite a few retirements um, and, of course, crashes with Neville and Meek. We had Uo Hannon and another poor rally for him. Um, the, some pace was there occasionally, but, uh, yeah, he's hit, he's hit a tree again, Matty. Um, I mean... <laughs> we, 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 this is one thing we definitely got right with uh, UO, but he is leaking uh, to, to points. But uh, oh, what can you say? I think we can let Yuho get away with this. Um, because, obviously, the spotlight is on Latvala. No one really expected to see much from uh, Yuho. I think in the next few rallies... If he can just stop hitting a tree, <laughs> unless this is just be- gonna become the theme of his season where he keeps on hitting trees during every single rally, um, he'll he'll get back on track. But obviously, he's not really anywhere close to Latvala. Uh, but does he does he necessarily need to be? I don't feel he really needs to. Toyota probably aren't looking. I mean, they've won a rally, but will they? Be seriously looking at winning the manufacturer's title. I'm not. I'm not particularly sure about that. So I. I don't think there's anything too badly wrong with Hannon at the moment. I mean, well, we'll obviously have to see coming into mid-season whether Toyota. Yeah, I mean, it, it does feel a bit harsh to judge him off after these two rounds, but uh, you know, we'll have to see how he performs. Like I said, on, on gravel and on tarmac, of course, in in Corsica. But uh, uh, should we move on to the WRC two guys? Yes, let's let's go. Yes, well, quite an interesting rally for them. Um, we did have a really g- a good fight, really. I mean, Pontus Tiedemann, um, f- I would say, fairly comfortably won ra- won the uh, the WRC two rally, and um, with a very very solid job, finished ninth overall as well. Um, and this is his first win in Sweden, of course, after just missing out on the victory last year. Um, so yeah, great start to the season for him, and uh, you have to say, I think from this, he's with Mickelson, of course, not taking part in any further rounds, as, as far as we're aware. You'd, would you say that uh, Tiedemann is probably the championship favourite? I would definitely go ahead and say that. I mean, obviously the Mickelson situation, whether that, well, well, we we don't know what's going to happen from that. Um, you'd assume if Mickelson is back um, in the nearest future, I mean, if he's back in Mexico with, in WRC2, then the championship fight is back on. But he's perhaps got some other commitments, maybe wants to have himself a go at rally cross, obviously. Um, he, needs, he needs something to keep himself occupied for this season. 
Um, and t- unless that uh, Toyota call up comes halfway through the season, you never know. If I if I was uh, if I was Tommy Mackinnon, I would be certainly looking interested to see if Mickelson is uh, whether he whether he's got the whether he's really kind of wanting the seat or not. Because I mean, if I was in his position, I would be doing everything in my power to get a Toyota seat at this stage. Oh yeah, it's a it's a great advert, isn't it, for Toyota? And you think that Mackinnon would want someone as a, of his uh, capabilities, it's particularly what he showed last year. He's worked with uh, Latvala as well in the past. I understand they have a, a pretty decent relationship as well. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see that. But uh, you know, it depends. I mean, if Toyota wants someone for the future, and Mickelson's kind of like, well, I'll do half the season, but I, I might not be doing next year. That might could have been a bit of a stumbling block. But uh, I think Mickelson should just just take the seat. I think he'll be a great partnership with Latvala uh, at Toyota. I would I would like to see that, but uh, we'll have to see. I mean, if you we might have Lappy in a third Toyota or possibly replacing Han in a selected round. So uh, I think there might be a bit of a queue at Toyota, especially after after what they've done this weekend. I think quite a few guys would uh, like a a seat, but I think that uh, Mickelson should definitely be right up there. Um, Timu Sunanen finished second and Ola Christian Verbi finished third um, what a great rally for him I was really impressed with him I do believe it's his WRC2 debut um, this weekend and he did an absolutely fantastic job um, he's actually um, predominantly a rallycross driver so far but he has made the switch over to rallying and uh, of course competing in this rally Sweden is a very very good step for him and uh, he impressed me right from the off we had Eric Cowley in fourth um, once again, not really showing too much pace. I mean, Sunanen switched from Skoda to Ford for this event, and really he outclassed Kamali. Kamali, I think a bit dejected. I mean, I know he had quite a few technical issues, but uh, he's not looking the same guy, really. I think that, that season last year in the WRC really um, did knock his confidence. We had Gus Greensmith, also I think making his WRC2 debut, of course, for the Brit. Did a solid job to finish fifth. Uh, then we have... Bergvist, we had Arai, of course, who's one of the two uh, Toyota Young drivers, along with Katsuta, who finished ninth. We had Brinlinson in eighth, who set the Colin Crest record last year, and Colton in at tenth for the, the Polish guy um, in tenth. And then in eleventh was the Russian Luke Janok, I want to say. Um, I know who he is, I just can't pronounce his name because he's been in the European Rally uh, Rally Championship as well before. He's very, very quick, but he just crashes way too much. Um, I think he could have had a really successful career in, in a parallel universe, but for, for, it just wasn't to be. Uh, and he's 36 now and uh, you know struggling to find a break, but maybe this season will be that break he needs. I'm going to stop talking now about WRC2. Matty, uh, is there anything you want to say? Um, I just, just on Eric Camille, I think... Um... Uh, just, just kind of following on your point there. I mean, oh, the guy just doesn't seem to be driving with any confidence at the moment. And you know, just and yes, the guy obviously had problems during Sweden, but even then, I mean, if you're making the jump down from WRC, you should be at least be finishing, you know, podiums. You know, like Elfin Evans was doing last year. You know, you you don't necessarily have to win the WRC two championship. You just need to show that. You you still have the pace that you had and you promised you know from a year ago a year or two ago so um, he just needs to keep his chin up more than anything else I think the results will eventually come to Kamili but I don't think um, I don't think necessarily in the next few rounds I think it's probably been late season that we'll see him kind of up towards the right at the you know the pinpoint of the championship again. Yeah, that's a decent point. I mean, he's not too good on snow rallies anyway, really. So, um, yeah, like I said, I think his results will probably um, come towards the end of the season, hopefully for him, because uh, I think he certainly needs that. I mean, if you look at his first season in 2015, it was just kind of a similar story. Um, like you said, his, his best results came at the end of the season, so maybe uh, history will repeat itself. We had one entry into the WRC3 category for this weekend. <laughs> that was Louise Cook, who, if you don't know, is uh, a female rally driver who sold all of her trophies to get into uh, rallying this season. Um, very, very short of budget. Very quick on a day, but of course, like so many rally drivers, um, she has a few crashes, which is uh, a shame. Obviously, uh, she had technical issues as well and uh, just didn't have a great rally and unfortunately retired, which means she doesn't pick up any points um, after, after all that selling all your trophies um, to get there unfortunately she walks away with nothing mm. but at least she walked away hopefully with having a, a decent time of it and uh, it, it is a it is a shame really but uh, she didn't get to uh, you know compete um, 
for the whole thing. I mean, it just it just sort of just sort of shows the sacrifices that some people have to make to get in a rally, and you know, it's a it's a money sport, and the end of it is motorsport, and you know, good on her for making it to Sweden. That's that's massive. Yeah, exactly. That was, that was a huge achievement in itself. So I do hope she had a, a cracking time. I hope she gets another shot as well. Hopefully she'll do a few more rallies and uh, we'll hopefully have um, a few of her entries as well. I mean, we had quite a few um, in, in Monty, but the WRC3 is a bit of a weird one, really. It's just trying to get people involved who don't have the biggest budget, and which I think is always a, a, never really a bad thing. So uh, WRC Junior category, of course, that kicks off in Corsica. They switched from Citroën to, to uh, uh, Fords uh, for this season. Um, and also, just want to mention, because I don't think we have yet, Matt Salzberg and Lorenzo Batelli, Valerie Gorban. Of course, Otzberg making his debut in the 2017 car, Matty. Um, didn't go his way. His bumper fell off. Um, sorry, rear wing fell off. Um, I think it was on Friday. Just detached itself from the car. And uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up his weekend. It gave us the first opportunity to see how much aero makes a difference with these cars. Um but I think I think the one amazing story from that was uh, the fact that they I don't know did they tweet or something yes, that they that. lost their rear wing on a stage and then and then miraculously a fan came with the rear wing and gave it back to them at service. Um, so that meant I think by that time they already retired or something or they'd already lost oh, uh, yeah, quite a was, bit of time. Yeah, they slipped down quite a lot and I think they just kind of re-entered under Rally Two took a time penalty to kind of rebuild the car more um, for the following days but the, of course Collins Crest gave us a really really nice jump 44 metres just one metre off the record um, so yeah the, the record set with a WRC2 car though <laughs> exactly yeah so it is technically the WRC record so uh, credit to Matt as well for giving us quite the show I'm sure you can find the clip it's pretty much all over uh, social media if you guys haven't seen it um Lorenzo Botelli, I'll briefly mention, uh, not because of this rally, because uh, it didn't go very well. He had so many technical issues, he couldn't, he could barely even start the car. It was that kind of uh, broken. Um, but he's going to be in a 2017 Ford for Rally Mexico, of course, the next rally, so that's going to be good to see. Um, and Valerie Gorban as well was the kind of final WRC entry, but I, did, I think he's the last guy um, we haven't mentioned. And of course, he was in the Mini, uh, but things didn't really go his way. Uh, but he did get to the end of the rally, so uh, credit to him. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see Batelli win it. It'd be nice to see another 2017 Ford on the grid in Mexico, because of course we won't be having Matt Salzberg for then, um, because his wife's having a baby. So <laughs> you won't be seeing Matt in uh, Mexico, but um, hopefully he'll be back in France, and hopefully Mark, Martin Prokop as well, his teammate, will be there. And we might have a grid of, um, what, say, 13 or 14 WRC cars. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be excellent. Biggest one, well, one of the biggest grids we've we'll have had in a while. Yes, that'd be very nice, and hopefully we'll get a third Toyota as well. That that would be very nice, and uh, hopefully a third 2017 Citroen as well. Um, and and no further word on when we're going to get that, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see about that one. Any final thoughts on Rally Sweden before we make our predictions for Rally Mexico? Um, just the fact that even even in Sweden, where the, where the you know it's obviously a snow rally, we. We got a new record for the fastest rally ever recorded, so um, I, it, I guess we'll see what happened. I mean, obviously we both predicted Finland would break the record. I, did, I certainly didn't see Sweden breaking the record, so it just shows the pace of these new cars. Yeah, it is quite frightening. I mean, they even cancelled as uh, stage 12 because uh, the, the speeds were too big in the, in the first loop around it in uh, stage 9, so... Clearly, um, I think they're even faster than the organisers predicted. I mean, it's difficult for them. I saw a lot of people kind of um, complaining, and they do have a point, of course. You know, why would you um, allow these... You know, you, you knew the cars were going to be faster, so why didn't you, you sweep the stages? But it is tough, because it is kind of the first time we're seeing these cars go through these stages. You know, they don't have prior years to look upon, because these cars are, are completely different. So I think uh, lessons to be learned, I think, for the organisers for these uh, th- this whole year, really, I think, for, for every event. Absolutely. I th- it, you know, it's a tough judgment call when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, just losing one stage, I think I think you can be all right with that. Exactly. And after what happened in Monty, of course, they have to be seen to be, uh, you know, making some some changes in that. I think that's what they're doing. So uh, that's very good. 
Um, yeah, let's talk about Rally Mexico then. Um, for me, it's it's probably one of my favourite rallies, really. I absolutely love it. It's the first um, gravel rally, which, in my opinion, is the only service we should be racing on. <laughs> rally on. But no, of course, it's great to have the snow and uh, ice rallies as well. And uh, we don't really need the tarmac ones. But, you know, um, <laughs> we, we've, got the, we've got the first gravel rally of the year, of course, is what, what we like to see. So that one's going to be pretty tough, isn't it, for all the crews, of course, with the high temperatures, high altitude, engines really suffering. And uh, just yeah, like the, the, some drivers I think are going to be uh, feeling the heat. Oh yeah, I mean it, it, this is the real kind of killer of a of a rally because it, as you mentioned, the altitude it ch- absolutely chokes the engines, or it has in the past few years. They sh- they could be okay this year with the more powerful cars, but you, you know with that altitude air's thinner, the aero isn't really going to be making much difference as it has in the past. I feel like it's probably going to be. One, well, it's, it's probably going to be not too dissimilar as it was to last year. The only real difference being that they're probably carrying a lot more speed down the straight. But I mean, the corners will, there won't be that added benefit really of the aero as, or as much. Um, just simply because of the, the air, you know, the altitude and the air. And I feel, um, well, it will give us a good chance to see who's brought the best engine. You know, this one, I feel. Yes, definitely, yeah, that, that's definitely a good point. And of course, last year, who won but uh, Yari, Mat- Yari Matty Latvala, so um, <laughs> maybe it'll be two wins on the pounds for him. He obviously uh, likes this place, Auger was second, uh, Matt Sosberg was actually third, um, but of course he won't be present this year. And uh, guess where Danny Sorda was? Fourth. Fourth, yeah. <laughs> so, I think I, I might make that prediction now, actually, That's my, that might be one I actually get right, um, to say Sordo is fourth. But yeah, let's talk about that then. Who... Is going to win at Rally Mexico? That is the question. I am going to go out on a whim and go with uh, Oitanek. Ooh, interesting. Um, second and third? Uh, second. Second will be Ogier, and third will be uh, Latvala. Right, okay. I'm going to say Latvala and Tota's dream is going to come back down to earth, so I think they're going to have a poor rally. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be boring. Say OJ for once, because <laughs> I feel like I've gone like um, meek and pattern or something so far, and that's that's gone horribly wrong. I'd love to see Neville take the win, but of course he's been out. Oh, yeah, mm, I'll say OJ um, because he's not running first on the road as well. Of course that'd be Latvala. Um, so I'm gonna say OJ Tanak. Should we go one? Yeah, let's go one two. And um, <laughs> let's say. Neville getting Neville's going to reach the end of this rally, is he? <laughs> that's a that's a brave prediction to make, but uh, yeah, I think we're both wishing the best of luck. We wish everyone, of course, the best of luck. Hopefully, Meek will uh, get to the end of this one, and we can actually see a proper kind of rally long pace from Sitchin because we haven't really seen that without them running into uh, hundreds of technical issues. No, we haven't. I mean, it, I I really really hope we can finally see a rally where there's no problems for any of the cars because I mean, I want to see. If Neuville in the Hyundai Zati have the pace to win a rally, I'm ninety nine percent sure they do. But I, w- I want Neuville to, I want Neuville to win, but I'm not sure if he will win. You know, I think with the, with how fragile the Hyundai seems to be, um, I just don't, I just don't see him winning the rally. But you know, best of luck, and I'm hoping to be proven wrong. He did crash here twice as well last year, so. Um... Maybe not the best kind of precedent to go off, but you know, I'm sure he can make up for those mistakes. And uh, what well, would we'll probably be joining you, of course, after Mexico should be a very good rally. Um, we've made our predictions then, Matt. If you don't have anything else to add, I think we'll uh, wrap no, up. No, there's here. nothing else to add. Everything's been said. <laughs> very good. Well, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at Motorcast underscore. Um, and of course, you can find us here on YouTube as well. And there should be a download link as well, so you can listen to this episode on the go. Although I'm pretty sure if you got to the end, you probably don't want to listen to it again. Um, but for future videos, you should be able to find all of those download links in the description below. And of course, comment down below as well your thoughts. Give us your predictions for Rally Mexico. And that is, is, is of course, where we will see you, um, of course, I think in the second week of March, I want to say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So uh, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me.